One of the criticisms that comes up about modern comics is that there's too many minorities, too many female characters, too much uh, affirmative action style characters in comics. Is that true? And if it's not, why do people feel that way? Um, let me go into what's undoubtedly a pretty touchy subject. Hey there, this is Perch. Um, if you've been listening to YouTube videos of comics any in the last, you know, three, four years, you probably have heard a lot about kind of the, the forced inclusion, is usually the way it's described, of female, minority, kind of um, different ethnicities, uh, rarely kind of uh, disabled uh, characters, but, but really kind of in that mark of either more female characters or more non-white characters. So, so basically more non-white male characters. And this has been, I think, the talking point and, and frankly, the main thrust of, of quite a few different channels that, that go into this topic every single day. And I think that, uh, you know, I, on one hand, let me just kind of put this out there. I, I'm surprised that there's enough to talk about. I think no matter where you fall on the issue, whether you um, agree that's a problem, whether you think it's baloney, either case, I, I just you know, there's there's a limit on, on the amount of material, isn't there? I mean, at some point, you, you've heard it. Uh, you've heard it all. I mean, I would think that the numbers of those channels would go down and the people would like, oh, I got to come up with some new topics because, you know, I've, I've just, again, whether you agree wholeheartedly, I, I agree with a lot of things. I don't want to, I don't want to hear about them every day. I just, I get, I'm like, I'm, I'm ready for something new. Uh, it's kind of the, the, the issue. So, um, you know, I think that this is a touchy subject because it, it, it generally in our world of kind of polarizing opposites, we have to either say it's 100% not true, absolutely not true, ridiculous. The people who say it say there are uh, problems in this area are racists and terrible people, full stop. And then the other side of it is uh, no, if you you know if you think anything else, you're a you're one of the enemy. You're you're SJW bleeding heart liberal. Uh, trying to ruin comics and and it's so obvious it's right in front of our face. Um, anything anything other than full acceptance is is wrong. That's good. that's it tends to be the two sides in a nutshell. You know, um, but the truth and the truth is not down the middle. Um, the truth is actually kind of a little bit more complicated and a little bit more boring, honestly. And the simple answer is uh, first. You know, the, the characters and the makeup of these titles will ultimately reflect what will sell. Uh, a lot of people are going to be tearing their hair out at various times during this video. I'm just just putting it out there. But um, and you may say, well, I'm proof, you know, comics are selling less than they used to. Well, yes, but it's not so again, it's not nothing is so straightforward. You know, comics aren't distributed at the newsstand. Comics don't have returnability anymore. There's lots of reasons why comics aren't selling as well as they used to and pointing at at kind of no there's too many non-white male characters being introduced as the sole culprit or even the number one culprit i, I think is is hard to buy I, I think even the most kind of dedicated uh argument somebody might have would fall apart if you're saying that's the number one reason comics have dropped right? there's a lot of reasons that would come long before that would be a, a consideration um, the other challenge, the other thing that kind of gets in here and makes it more complicated is that a lot of the original superheroes, a lot of the comics that were made in the, you know, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, have primarily featured at least white characters. Uh, it was more unusual that there were different races, different nationalities, and, and generally a lot of places we'd go with, they'd go with white, they'd go with black, they'd go with, you know, maybe Indian uh, <laughs> not India Indian, but Native American Indian. Um, and then they'd kind of like, all right, we're good. You know, every now and then you'd see like an Asian character go floating through, usually when, uh, you know, Iron Man was fighting the Mandarin. Um, but yeah, that was about it. Mexican characters, not really so much. I mean, they existed. You know, people like to point out, it's like, ah, what about, uh, you know, what about character X? You know, yes, there, there are examples, but they're, they're far and few between. I think most people could admit that. And 
So what's happened as comics have uh, have, you, have gotten, you know, we've gotten more into the melting pot. There's there's more races. There's more audience. I think is maybe the biggest way. All, you know, all, all by the way, everything you hear me route uh, with this discussion will route back to money. It always gets there in the end. But as there's more audience, as there's more of a global market, as there's more of an attempt to get these comics into hands that are, you know, more hands, different hands than the, the available market from 20, 30 years ago, um, that you'll see, of course, more, you know, more of a desire, more of a need to have faces in the comic that are, are reflective of the new audience that they're trying to get to. And I, I think that's, that's a normal thing. So, you know, is it, is it a true statement that, Comics are trying to push more um, non-white male characters into comics. Y yeah, I mean, I, there's no way you could say no to that. I mean, there's 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 hard data and stats to prove it. Comics are absolutely introducing, you know, different characters, different uh, you know, different genders. We'll go just for the sake of this argument. It could be another video. We'll we'll get into the LGBTQ side of the world. And in a later video, otherwise this thing will go on 45 minutes. Nobody wants that. Uh, but it, it definitely, there are, there is a desire to bring more of those characters into comics. And simultaneously, as more of those characters are coming into comics, um, you're seeing a couple things happening. You're seeing, you know, the, the loss of the, the newsstand. You're seeing the removal of returnability, which puts more risk into selling comics. You're seeing prices go up in comics. You're seeing, uh, now here's, here's going to be one of those delicate statements that some people disagree with, but you are seeing quality go down. And when I say quality, I'm saying, you know, the, the money is, the, it, it, it's kind of a combination of the money's not there and, and or the money's in other places more. So, for example, I mean, lots of people would love to see Art Adams draw comics, and so, same with John Byrne, and say with same with uh, J. Scott Campbell. I mean, despite where her organs, people would like to see J. Scott Campbell. He sells books, and people would like to see those artists do comics. But when you're pumping out a hundred plus comics a month, you know, if, if that's probably an exaggeration on Marvel's side, but if you're DC, you're pumping out fifty plus. If you're Marvel, you're pumping out at least 80. Uh, you you don't have you know not you don't have either the available talent pool or the money. Frankly, you're you're going for volume a little bit more than quality, and and quality is subjective. Yes, you can argue you can definitely say you know one one person's steak is another person's hamburger. It's true, there are different levels of quality, but what is also true is that you know when you're putting less money into the talent. When you're put, when you're giving people you know less, you're going and you're pumping out more, you're going to get a you know a, a degraded talent pool, and I, a degraded is a negative word, and I understand that that hurts some feels out there, but it is it's just a fact of life. If you're paying less for something, you know, I put it this way: you have two sushi restaurants. Sushi restaurant number one, you know, you get a nice uh, twelve piece sushi sashimi platter. It's going to be you know forty dollars. Okay. Restaurant number two, they're offering a same same amount sashimi platter for five dollars. Now, you know, you can you can make a, a, a basic assumption that the five dollar sushi platter may not be the freshest, best, you know, prevent you from getting super sick the next day. It just it may not be the best quality sushi. Well, again, with comics, you know, the the money that's being paid out to make these comics has not risen with the volume of comics being put out and has not risen with where, you know, really top tier art talent uh, can, can get elsewhere, frankly. I mean, Joe Mad, um, you know, was very public and open about the fact that doing art for games paid a lot more, that he was able to just sell his wares for a lot more than he was getting at Marvel and even a lot more than what he was able to get for his own book and image. I mean, do you think that uh, Joe Majura would have, I mean, you know, if, if he was paid the same, don't you think he would have rather continued to make his own book that where he get all the, the upside and the ability to, to, you know, sell off the rights and do those other things? He, he would have happily done that. But the reality was his, his art was in demand and there was a, a buyer that was willing to pay more than comics. So he went there. So I, I, none of this has to be kind of you know, emotional or, or opinion-based, it can be fact-based. Uh, there, there's not enough money and, and 
you know, into this. So why, why did I go down the money path? Well, because it, it coincided, the, the drop of money in comics coincided with the desire to really boost up uh, the, the global reach, if you will, the more characters that are more diverse, that have different races, different ethnicities. Um, you know, the two things kind of hit at the same time. And when you also bring in the fact that comics are very expensive and that, that, as I said, newsstand's gone, returnability is gone, there's a much better value uh, entertainment things out there. I, I mean, you know, I've said, I've done other videos on this. If you can go and, and get, you know, six ninety nine Disney Plus for a month with thousands of hours of movies on there, that's that's tough to compete with if you're a comic. So it's unfortunate, if you will, that this global expansion and this introduction of, you know, more diverse roster characters hit at the same time that comics have a lot of challenges right now. The challenges are, and so a lot of people make the, I'd say, incorrect conclusion that the, you know, minority characters and the, uh, the, the introduction of more female characters are the reason for those drops in sales. It's, that's not true. That's not that's not why those two are the same. There's, again, there are a lot of other factors that have come in before it. But it does become a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you have all these other factors that are, that are problematic, that are, that are causing comics to, to sink and to, to suffer and to struggle, and you're introducing these other kind of more diverse characters, it, it feeds on itself. And, and pretty soon, you know, you have you know, fans getting louder and louder and louder saying, you know, if you want our money, if you want the money that we have to give you, then you need to give us the classic books. And as much, you know, the comic company, the publishers, if they resist that, then they're not listening to the fans. And now you've got exactly the scenario that we hear about on YouTube every day. Um, what's the solution here? Uh, well, and, and I'll throw one more thing out there. Again, might be controversial. This is where people can accuse me of being a right wing nut. Um, I will say that the introduction of more diverse characters was probably, well, not probably, it was done at a faster pace, faster rate than the market was ready to accept it. So the introduction of these other characters, again, done for money reasons, we're trying to broaden that global reach of the comic, uh, they, 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 for lack of a better word, shotgunned these characters in over a pretty short time period, over the course of, you know, less than a decade, they tried to balance uh, or at least, you know, uh, diversify their line from the previous you know, 50 years. And so it, it wasn't handled in the most, I would say, elegant way. It wasn't, it was, it was jarring. And especially when you had your existing market, it probably came off as, as pretty, pretty shady. Like they had a comic that they really liked and then suddenly surprise, and now it's all different. And that is, you know, and, and the, the ar aggravating part of that argument is when publishers or comic creators or people, quote unquote, on the inside go, what? What are you talking about? Oh, you, you just must be a bunch of racists. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, we're just trying to be more reflective of our of our world. You don't like you don't like women in comics. You don't like that. I, it, it, it's you're you're putting off a little bit too much of the huh kind of behavior where. You know, this isn't a, this, none of this should be a surprise. You know, if you drank the same kind of coffee every day for 50 years and then suddenly, you know, your, your, your husband, your wife, whatever decides to go, Hey, you know, this, this coffee is super unhealthy for you. I'm going to switch you up to the organic, healthier coffee. And you're like, what the hell is this? You, first time you drank it, it would be jarring and you'd probably hate it because it wasn't what you knew. And so you can argue, well, it's good for you. You should drink it anyway. And maybe it is. But you can't deny that it's going to be jarring for people. You can't deny that that can come as a bit of a shock that you're moving along, you know, enjoying one thing and then suddenly it's different. And, you know, who knew that somebody would be upset by that? I mean, it should it shouldn't these things shouldn't be a surprise. And I hate it when creators are like, well, I'm, I'm completely shocked that it would be so racist. It's like, eh, it, it, don't go so quick to the racism angle. Saying, hey, I've been enjoying something and now you, you know, it's changed and it's different and it happened kind of overnight and it happened as the price tag went up by a dollar and it happened as kind of the art quality dropped. Uh, you know, there, there, there could, again, just like I think there's a lot of reasons why comic sales have gone down that have or that 
far precede any of this kind of introduction of, of different genders, different minorities. Um, same thing. The creators have to realize there's quite a few reasons why people might be upset with the way comics are changing that, that come way before the big R racism. Or maybe I'm naive. Maybe every single person is complaining is part of the clan, in which case, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Um, we're all in trouble, but, but no, that's just ridiculous. The, the, as I said, I think that this stuff came in quicker than probably it should, it should have is a wrong word, but just, it was not, it was not landed to the existing readers and the existing fan base in the best way. And, and that's probably an understatement. It was, it was landed really, really poorly. And when the, the reader base complained, they were told they were racist, which kind of doubled down on that mistake and made it even worse. And so that's, that's where that all, you know, rolled out. Now that's not an excuse for a bunch of, you know, terrible racist idiots who are truly offended that, you know, we've got black people on the Avengers now. Um, there's, there's, I've, I've seen those tweets. I've seen people like, why are black people on the Avengers? It's like, dude, do Black Panther it was on the Avengers in the seventies. Like, I, I don't know what, you know, don't know what you're talking about being ridiculous, but that's, 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 you know, basically my kind of, you know, feeling on the whole bit. I, I think, you know, it all comes down to good writing is it comes down to good art. You put out a good product. Then I think the vast majority of people are going to be just fine with what, you know, whoever's starring in it, I black, white, Mexican, Latino, uh, Asian, Indian, whatever you want to do. I do think that, you know, you, you ought to, you know, as we struggle for, for different markets, as we push for that global, global market and, and new things, we have to remember that you still have an existing market to, to deal with. And dealing with that existing market does not put mean putting out, you know, the all white show, um, the, the white dude superhero team. That's not what that means. It just means you have some people who have invested decades of their life into these characters and you got to figure out how to land that plane. It's no different than if you have a you know, movie trilogy and you've got movie number one. Okay. Well received movie number two. Well received. If the writer came in and said for movie number three, Hey, let's do this. Let's yank the rug out from everybody and let's go ahead and just change the whole cast out and let's uh, kill off the main character that people have been rooting to for, for rooting for, for movies one and two. And why not? Um, yeah, people are going to be pissed. I mean, you, you shouldn't be surprised by that. And you shouldn't, no, no one in their right mind would do that. Anyway, um, that's my take on it. What do you think? You know, this is a tough emotional subject for people for what, you know, for, I would say for whatever reason, but I understand why it's emotional for people. It's all those reasons we've been talking about. Um, but leave a comment below. How do you feel about it? You, you agree with my take, disagree with my take, think I'm being too ridiculous. Please, I, you know, the, the one thing I guess I didn't hit on was the theory of, there's a bunch of comic creators who are deliberately are like sleeper agents and they're trying to insert, um, you know, minority characters, and women characters as a sneaky attack to destroy comics. They secretly hate comics and they hate all white people. And they, they just, they, they're doing all this as a, as a, a goal to just destroy comics and what makes people happy. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, one, that, that's not the case. I'm sorry. You could cite evidence to me all day long. That's, that's, not, that's not reality. Um, two, there's a, there's a large number of people to, make into go, to, to go into making these comics, even if you hire a lunatic. And I do think the big two and others have hired lunatics from time to time. I think, um, I think Max Bemis was a flat-out lunatic. I'm just saying it. Um, but, you know, there's, there's an editor, there's a writer. There's an, the amount of collusion necessary to create this this big master plot of destroying comics um, is is ridiculous. It, it's not true. Now, don't confuse people being stupid or underpaid or unqualified for having a sneaky master plot to destroy comics. Once again, I think the um, the dumb, underqualified, underpaid, don't care, too much volume, way too many comics coming out. The quality is dropping as a result. Uh, those things tend to fly much higher up in the scale of what's actually going on than a top secret uh, plan to to destroy what people love. But you, know, you may feel differently, and that's okay. It's it's your it's your opinion, man. Leave a comment below, like, uh, subscribe if you would. Tell a friend to subscribe. Subscribe subscribers help me. So thank you for that. Follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.